7.05 a.m. Bastion Favel. The instant Bastion opened his eyes, he saw Barkley, curled up at the edge of his bed, staring up with eyes the color of gold coins. Come on, boy, he whispered. Barkley bounded forward and began eagerly licking his face. Hey, take it easy. Bastion looked down at the puppy, part German shepherd and part retriever. Barkley had fur and eyes the same golden color. You're going on a big trip today, he told the puppy. You won't see me for a couple of days, but you'll be okay. Really, you'll do great. Here, go get it. He took a little Nerf football and threw it. This sent the puppy scampering madly across the room. Barkley grabbed the football and brought it back to Bastion. Come on, Bastion, Mom yelled. You don't want to be late. It's your last day of school. Good boy, Bastion said, taking the football. He got out of bed. Last day of school. He repeated it over and over. By now, moving was no big deal. He had moved before, and he'd move again. For Air Force brats, that's how it would always be. Twelve years old, and this would be his eighth move. He could rattle off the eight different bases for anyone who cared to listen. One, Kadena Air Force Base in Okin Okinawa. Two, Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. 5. Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. 6. Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. 7. Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina. 8. Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. He couldn't remember Okinawa. He'd, just, he'd been just a baby then, but he could remember all the other places. Every military base or town, every cramped apartment and officer's barracks, the PXs, and commissaries, and all his best friends, Chad, Drew, Troy, Connor, John. Their pictures were taped into his scrapbook. Now his father was being transferred to Hickman Air Force Base in Honolulu, Hawaii. Bastion didn't mind that. Hawaii was a place he'd always wanted to see. Moving again would be a cinch if it wasn't for Barclay and the quarantine. When Dad first explained about the quarantine, Bastion couldn't believe it. The military authorities wanted to prevent contagious germs from contaminating Hawaiian animals. They were worried that any animal coming into Hawaii might have a disease it could give to other animals. That's why they had the quarantine. They had strict rules. Any dog coming into Hawaii had to be quarantined, kept away by itself, until they were sure the dog didn't have any contagious disease. Barkley would be quarantined for four months. That's crazy. Crazy! Barkley doesn't have any disease, he told his dad. I know, but the military makes the rules, and we have to follow them. They can't take any chances. There's no exceptions. Well, that's the stupidest rule I've ever heard. I know it will be hard on you, Dad said, but it's going to be even harder on Barkley. Do you really want to put a puppy through all that? It's something to think about, Bastion. I know you love him, but maybe you should consider leaving Barkley here. Leave him here? Are you kidding? I'm sure we could find a family who could take care of him. No way. I want my dog. All right, then. Can I visit him when he's quarantined? Yes, but I'm warning you, it's still going to be hard. In the kitchen, his mother was standing on the stepladder, taking plates from a cabinet. There were boxes everywhere. Got anything to eat, Ma? There's cereal, she said. Shredded wheat. Shredded wheat, he groaned. Why don't they just call it shredded newspaper? That's how it tastes. This isn't a restaurant, she retorted, and I can't stop to fix you anything because I've got to pack this kitchen. Whistling, Dad walked into the kitchen. He was wearing a crisply, crisply ironed uniform, hair neatly combed and gleaming. Is your room all packed, he asked. No. You need to do that first thing after school, he said. We've got to be completely packed tonight. We're leaving tomorrow morning at zero dark thirty. Okay. Bastion poured a bowl of shredded wheat. Barkley sat on the floor watching Bastion shovel the cereal into his mouth. The Nerf football was resting between the puppy's paws. What time does Barkley's flight leave tonight? He asked Dad. Six o'clock sharp, he said. I'm coming to the airport, Bastion said, picking Barkley up. You'll get to Hawaii first, you lucky dog. At the airport, they would give Barkley a shot to make him sleep for the long flight to Hawaii. Bastion pippered pictured the puppy, scared and alone on the plane. Then, the quarantine. 
four months, 122 days of solitary confinement in a cage. Or maybe there would be other dogs. He didn't know. I'm going to visit you every day, Bastion promised, and twice on Saturdays, okay? Barkley looked up hopefully. The phone rang. Yo, Bastion, it was John Clerk, his best friend at school. Hey, what's up? Not much, John said. I'm staying home today. Very bad stomach ache. I was thinking you might have one too. Do you? I can't, Bastion said, grinning. It's my last day. I thought your last day was Monday. Dad, Dad changed his mind. We're leaving tomorrow. I gotta pack my stuff right after school. Okay, it's your funeral, John said. Just don't blame me if you die of boredom today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I guess I won't see you before you move. Have a nice life. Bastion threw Barkley the Nerf football, and the dog caught it in his mouth. The puppy looked up, eyes full of golden light and perfect trust. Yeah, you too. 7.08 a.m. Jessica Cook. She stared at herself in the bathroom mirror. Amazing how skinny she had grown, and tall. She was the tallest kid in the whole sixth grade, which suited her fine. Jessica didn't mind being different. Breakfast, Mom called. Okay, Jessica yelled. She gave her hair three more brushes, 48, 49, 50, wheeled out of the bathroom and ran down to the kitchen. Monica, Jessica's three-year-old sister, was sitting on the floor. Hi, Monica. Hi, Mom. Boy, am I hungry. You could use some meat on your bones, Mom said. You want a waffle, scrambled eggs, fruit salad, cereal? All the above, Jessica replied, nodding. I'm starving. Warning, ladies, Dad said, walking into the kitchen. He poured himself a cup of coffee and sat down at the table. Hi, Dad. Nice suit. Thanks, he said, smiling at her. What's going on in school, Jessica? How's Mr. Fabiano? Mr. Fab is fabulous. She poured herself a large bowl of cereal. Next week, we're going to start a research project. On? My future profession, Jessica said, like what we want to be when we grow up. And you want to be a lawyer, right? He smiled at her. Like father? Like daughter? Nope, she said. I want to be the chief justice of the Supreme Court. Nice, he said, nodding. But most Supreme Court justices are judges first, and most judges are lawyers first. You'd make a fine lawyer, Mom said, putting a plate of scrambled eggs in front of her. You've got the mi right mind for it. Yes, and the law is important, Dad said. Without the law, there would be total anarchy. Monica ran over and took the seat next to Jessica. What are you going to be when you grow up? Jessica asked her. A horsey rider, Monica said, dead serious. Can you teach me, please? I've got to go to school, Jessica told her. I thought today was a home day, Monica said sadly. Nope, it's Friday. Tomorrow's a home day. Here's your waffle, Mom said to Monica. Let me help you cut it, Jessica offered. No, I do it myself, Monica said. She stabbed her fork into the waffle, but it slid off the plate and knocked over her cup. Orange juice spilled onto the table and all over Dad's suit. She can't do it herself, Dad yelled, jumping up. What were you thinking? For heaven's sake, she's only three years old. Sorry, Dad, Jessica said. Now I've got to go change. Dad stormed out of the kitchen. 7.13 a.m. Sean O'Day. He was walking with a dog. They were walking through a huge manson, mansion with many large and beautiful rooms. But the house was the forest and the rooms were made by trees. The trunks grew closer together to form walls and he found he could walk through the walls and enter clearings lit from above by salt light. Soft light that flickered as it sifted through the le leafy branches. He entered one forest room where the light was so green and pure he sat down for a moment and closed his eyes. The dog came and sat close by him. It was quiet. He sat with his hunting rifle, holding it loosely with the safety on and the chamber empty. Hey! A hand roughly shook his shoulder. Hey, wake up! Sean blinked open his eyes and saw Darlene. He groaned and rubbed his eyes. He hated getting bumped out of a dream, especially a sweet dream like that. Come on, bud. It's almost quarter past. You better get on a, a move on it or you'll miss the bus. He glanced at the clock, barely 20 minutes before the school bus came. 
He waited until Darlene left the room before he got out of bed. From the top drawer, he dug out a clean pair of socks, but couldn't find any clean t-shirts, and not a single pair of clean underwear either. He went to the pile of clothes on the floor and dug through them until he found a pair of shorts and a t-shirt that didn't look too bad. In the kitchen, Darlene was sipping a cup of coffee and staring out the window. Behind her, on the counter, Sean made a quick count of the empty green beer bottles. Eleven. Top of the morning to you, she said. Hi. He didn't have to ask where Dad was, passed out in the bedroom, sleeping it off. You've got quite a pile of dirty clothes in your room, Darlene said. Smells like a locker room in there. Could you do me a favor, Sean? Pick up those clothes and throw them into the washing machine. I'll run it through. Yeah, okay. I'll do it after school. Darlene sometimes reminded Sean of Dad's last girlfriend, Carla. Carla had been 10 years younger than Dad, and Darlene was even younger than that. She was 22, barely 10 years older than Sean. He opened the fridge. We got any bagels, he asked. We're out, Darlene said. I'll get some when I go shopping today. You want some scrambled eggs? No. Well, you better eat something, she said. Don't got time, he answered, even though his stomach was growling something fierce. He yanked a can of soda from a six-pack and tucked it into his knapsack. Then he went back to his room, grabbed a candy bar from the top of his bureau, and slipped out of the house.